en ce moment, sur le dos des migrants, qu'est-ce que vous faites exactement? Est-ce que c'est le temps de renégocier l'entente des tiers pays sûrs? On est rendu où dans cette renégociation-là? Mais écoute, sur la question de, d'immigration, on a un, une très bonne collaboration historique avec euh, la province de Québec. Il y a une entente qui, qui marche bien, euh, pas seulement pour Québec, mais, mais même pour euh, tous, les, tous les Canadiennes. C'est une, euh, c'est une avenue de collaboration où le gouvernement fédéral donne des ressources euh, pour, euh, pour accueillir des immigrants euh, année après année pour adresser les pénuries de main d'œuvre qui est là. Et ce n'est pas seulement bon pour, euh, pour eux euh, qui arrivent au Canada et au Québec, c'est bon pour l'économie, c'est bon pour tout le monde. Et écoute, je et, je écoute. Parle du chemin Roxham. Je, je, parle... je sais. Et sur la question de chemin Roxham, il y a une entente avec les États-Unis. Il y a un processus pour uh, traiter tout ce qui demande uh, le statut d'asile uh, dans une manière transparente et juste et équitable. Et on continue de renforcer l'intégrité de nos frontières. Comment vous faites pour renforcer l'intégrité? Parce que vous avez une entente avec un gros trou dedans. Mais C'est... depuis, depuis la, la dernière année, on avait investi 320 millions de dollars. Ça, c'est exactement qu'on peut renforcer l'intégrité de nos frontières pour ajouter des ressources pour l'ASFC. Il y a aussi une bonne collaboration avec les États-Unis. J'étais juste là avec mon homologue, la, euh, la secrétaire Mayorkas, euh, dans un ministère de la Five Eyes, et la collaboration est là. No, I appreciate the, uh, the question, Glenn, and I, I know that uh, you, like others, are, 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 like all of us, are, are keen to know about the circumstances surrounding um, Alice Anderson's death. Um, as I said to you at the time, there are two independent processes that are going on, and it would not be appropriate for me or any other elected member to preempt those processes. So um, the uh, Saskatoon police are looking into it. There's also an incident response group uh, out of Saskatchewan that are looking into the objective facts, and as those facts become known, so too will be the exact uh, reasons for uh, his, his passing. In the meantime, I do want to stress that we have to be there for the community. And I think over the past number of years, um, coming out of uh, port a uh, and the tragedy in, in Nova Scotia, that we, and, and, and specifically the RCMP, are um, taking some lessons out of that. And as we pointed out last week, what you saw from the RCMP uh, were timely alerts coming out. You saw uh, press conferences given. You saw the use of social media. And I want to thank the RCMP for their 24-7 work on that. And above all, Glenn, it's really important that we're there to support the James Smith Green Nation. Just to follow on that, on the, on the parole uh, question, too, you, you said you want to get some answers about what happened at, right. the, at, at his uh, parole hearing. It had something like 59 uh, criminal yeah. convictions. Have you got any more information on that now? Well, uh, I updated uh, the press gallery and, and all Canadians that the Parole Board and the Correctional Services of Canada are conducting a joint inquiry into the circumstances surrounding that decision. Look, I know that there will be a lot of questions about uh, our parole system. I think that, that is entirely appropriate. And it is important that, that we reflect on, on, on how that system works. And as I said, we're going to continue to look at the laws, the policies, and the resources that are necessary to, uh, to, to make sure that we keep our community safe. Yeah. offices might reopen? I'm sorry. Can you tell us when Nexus offices might reopen in Canada? Well, uh, this was one of the things that I discussed uh, with my American counterpart when I was in Washington, D.C. over the last couple of days. Uh, I think that there are some very concrete uh, solutions uh, that we are examining, uh, for example, leveraging virtual technology to make sure that we can get um, those applications processed as quickly as possible. And uh, I think we'll have more to say about that in the very near future. There's a huge backlog, though, sir. Can you tell us anything about when the Canadian offices might reopen? and why they aren't reopening. Well, first and foremost, uh, um, I know that we are doing everything that we can on our side of the border to make sure that we're taking uh, steps to progress those applications. And one of the things um, that we talked about when I was with uh, Secretary Mayorkas is how we can ensure that um, that our American counterparts are able to, to take some additional steps to process those applications. We have seen trade and travel going again. We've seen trade and travel go up remarkably uh, since the, uh, the height of the pandemic. That's good. And we'll continue to uh, leverage that collaboration through this innovation, through this program, so that we can see uh, more people travel quickly and efficiently. Are you going to American, American officers wanting to carry guns in the offices? Are you going to give in to their ask to do that? 
to well, have weapons? First of all, we, we have an agreement in place uh, as it relates to the discharge of American duties on Canadian soil. There's reciprocity uh, there as well for Canadian officials who, who exercise similar functions in the United States. But what's most important is that we are, um, again, processing those applications as quickly as possible, leveraging technology so that we can uh, see uh, people get going again on tra trade and travel. The whole point of the Nexus program uh, was to see that, uh, that, that we could have an efficient uh, degree of travel as it relates to frequent travelers, and that's something that I think we share in common on the goal. Est-ce que vous menez des enquêtes aux États-Unis pour essayer de démanteler les réseaux de passeurs? Est-ce que vous avez demandé ça à vos homologues américains ou ça ne vous dérange pas qu'il y ait des passeurs comme ça qui s'enrichissent pour faire passer des migrants à la frontière par le chemin Roxane? Il y a euh, plein d'exemples où il y a une bonne collaboration avec les États-Unis le, euh, pour immigration, pour... Euh, pour créer des parcours qui sont tellement efficaces, par exemple le Nexus. Et maintenant, euh, à l'étape que nous sommes, euh, nous arrivons euh, dans la pandémie, on va continuer de chercher euh, des façons d'augmenter de, de le niveau de, de processus de services euh, dans le contexte de Nexus. Et même, euh, on va continuer de chercher des autres parcours pour euh, collaborer euh, dans le contexte de l'immigration. Merci beaucoup. On a posé plein de questions à M. Singh, mais il y en a une dont je n'ai pas eu la réponse en français. C'est sur l'avenir de la monarchie. Au Canada. Qu'est-ce que vous en pensez? Qu'est-ce qu'on doit faire avec tout ce débat-là? Mais là, ce n'est pas un débat qu'on entretienne présentement. Et bien sûr, on a des, des discussions euh, sur la vie de Reine Elizabeth II. Et chez moi, à New Westminster, Burnaby, euh, j'ai des livres de condoléances. Alors, chaque jour, des gens font la file justement pour remplir, euh, écrire à la famille royale. Alors, ça touche les gens personnellement. C'est ça que je m'aperçois. Euh, Reine Elizabeth II a eu euh, trois visites à New Westminster, deux visites à Burnaby. Alors, chacun qui vient signer ses livres de condoléances euh, donne une histoire personnelle et c'est très touchant. Alors, pour ces périodes-là, pour ces périodes de, de deuil, euh, d'entendre ces histoires-là, c'est important. Une fois qu'on passe à travers, à cette, cette période de deuil, ça, on va passer, c'est sûr, à une autre, à une autre question sur euh, l'avenir. Mais ce n'est pas le moment maintenant, justement, à cause de cette période de deuil. Je comprends que ce ne soit pas le moment, à votre avis. Votre politique au NPD à propos de la monarchie constitutionnelle, c'est quoi? Est-ce que vous êtes pour le maintien de la monarchie de façon là, très, euh, historique ou contre? Mais c'est une question très pertinente. Là, on a un congrès qui aura lieu en juillet. Alors, c'est sûr, euh, étant donné le passage de Reine Elizabeth II, que ça va faire partie des discussions en, en juillet. Alors, euh, je dirais que là, quand je parle d'une période de deuil qui est suivie par des périodes de discussion, ça, c'en est un. Euh, au niveau du, du MPD et l'avenir, ça va être quelque chose, je suis certain, qui va être discuté dans les mois à venir. Mais est-ce que vous aviez une position jusqu'ici jusqu au sujet de, du maintien ou euh, non de la... Je pense que chacun a une, 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 une position personnelle. Euh, moi, j'en ai une aussi. Mm -hmm. On n'a pas eu vraiment... C'est quoi votre position? Mais ça, ça va faire partie des discussions qu'on va avoir suivies euh, de cette période de deuil. Mais qu'est-ce que je veux dire? Que ça n'a pas fait partie vraiment des discussions au Congrès du MPD jusqu'à maintenant. Il me semble que, suivant la période de deuil, ça va faire partie des discussions dans les mois à venir. Bien, merci. OK, oh, merci. Vous nous laissez en suspens, là. <rire> Mais euh, on, est, on est ici, justement, pour, pour, euh, pour faire vivre euh, la, la vie de Lisbeth II. Dans mon comté, sur toutes les personnes âgées, c'est très touchant. Qu'est-ce qui, euh, qu'est-ce qu'ils rencontrent Merci. Bonne journée. Merci. Are you worried about the tone in the House of Commons coming up following what happened this week with the Conservative Party apparently trying to um, get voters to um, get rid of Mr. Reyes for leaving caucus? 
Well, I have a lot of respect for uh, uh, Mr. Reis, and uh, I, I don't believe that was an appropriate response, and I think uh, Canadians saw that as well. As far as the tone in the House, I mean, uh, the, the NDP and, and Jagmeet Singh have always been focused on actions, right? We saw that during COVID when the NDP fought for real benefits to go to people to, so they could go through, through COVID uh, for small businesses as well. The, the NDP's um, influence was undeniable during that period. In this parliament, we are fighting for things that are important for, for people, people in my riding. Uh, putting in place a dental care plan, making sure that people who are renters have the wherewithal to, to, to pay their rent. Uh, looking, and, and Mr. Mr. Singh was very vocal on that, in enhancing the GST rebate so that people would have uh, um, more resources to put food on the table. Uh, the, the, the NDP has been focused on that. Jagmeet Singh has been focused on that. And that's, that's the role we're going to continue to play in Parliament. Uh, I, I don't believe that Canadians respond uh, positively to, to rhetoric or, or uh, chippiness on, on behalf of the government or of the official opposition. The NDP is going to be resolutely focused on people, resolutely focused on, on making sure people, Canadians, ha have what they need. And I think that will con contrast very vividly if we're seeing the kind of chippiness that I suspect will happen uh, starting next week. Pierre Polyam did win an overwhelming majority, though, to become Conservative leader. What does that tell you about how Canadians are responding to that kind of politics? Well, that, that, that's a very small subset of the Canadian population. I mean, the Conservative membership is... Uh, and the, the number of people who voted for him is about 1% uh, of Canadians. The, I think the vast majority of Canadians are focused on, on raising their families, making sure that their quality of life is there, that the jobs are in place, that they, they can actually, uh, if, if their kids' teeth need to, be, need to be fixed or maintained or repaired, that they have the wherewithal to do that. That's, that's where my constituents are. Uh, I, so I, I think the coming year is going to show um, a contrast. Uh, Mr. Mr. Polyev, I, I know him well. Uh, he was part of the Harper government, and we saw what the Harper government did to, to working families, uh, gutting services, increasing the age of retirement, so seniors had to work harder and longer, not providing any supports. And at the same time, the Harper government gave tens of billions of dollars to banks. They enhanced... Uh, overseas tax havens. It was banks and billionaires that seemed to be the priority of the Harper government. Mr. Polyev was part of that, and he will have to answer to that record. Mr. Trudeau, we've seen, has carried on in, in many respects in the same way. Lots of money to the banks and billionaires. And until the NDP has pushed him, not a lot of action for regular Canadians. So we have a leader who's stepping up on those issues, who is looking for action, looking to actually address the concerns that Canadians have. I think that contrasts very vividly with uh, the Liberal and Conservative leaders. And I think over the next year, that'll become clearer to Canadians. Merci. Oh, thank you. Merci. Merci.